Come with us today to a place that's hallowed ground for light geese hunters, the coastal prairie of Texas. The greatest dog handler teams in the world are gonna be competing today. We've also got dogs that can fly. It's time for Max Super Retriever Series. with our Ducks Unlimited Big Air Competition here in El Campo. And we have already had some fireworks in our first semi-final round. Keep in mind that the world champion, the world record holder, Little Morgan, is on the way coming up today. But in that first round, take a look at Coco and Mike McWilliams, a tremendous jump of 18 feet and 11 inches. You have got to watch Mike McWilliams toss the bumper. I have seen it three or four times, and every time it has been absolutely perfect. Get it, get it, get it, get it. We got the green light. Team drove down from Bro Bridge, Louisiana, and another excellent effort right there. Perfect toss. She took off very, very close to the edge of the dock. Gave up maybe 16, 17 inches. Nice now job for the rookies. Paul Cam may on, tell right the here. tale on this right one. They gave up two on. feet last time. They took a little bit of that back and a better jump. 20 feet and two inches no. for Mike stay. McWilliams Raider, and Coco. No. Possibly Raider, the most talented dog stay. in Big Air. Strong, no. fast, no. big ups, Raider, absolutely no. loves to retrieve. No. But Grant has got to get more consistent with his tosses. Let's see what he does. Brent Olson and Raider, the team from the Corn Husker State, catching the ear of corn out there. That is their trademark and another good, solid effort from Raider. He's a big boy, a lot, a lot of power there. Drive is what you need in a big air dog, just like you need it over on the Super Retriever track. We've got some good efforts there. Brent and Raider moving into second place, but Mike McWilliams and Coco still dominating in big air so far again. we got the world champion on the way. And we've got some weather on the way as we move over to the Super Retriever Trials course. Bill Autry and Rue, the team with the best score oh, so good, far, 71 faults. And we've completed flight one as we move into flight number two. 12 teams hopeful of making the five spots that go to the finals. Here comes Fred Brown and Ruby as we take a look at our Sport Dog virtual course. Fred and Ruby are brand new. Let's see how they can handle a very, very challenging course. Mark one comes out at 150 yards. Your dog has to be steady to see this mark. Mark two's out to the left at 175. Again, they're marking off the gun barrel only. There's no attention getting sound in the field. Mark three comes out at 190, way out there on the right side. Now sit really, really tight because here comes one in your face at five yards. After you sit tight, you pick all those birds up, you got a big monster blind out to the left. Now remember, everything is happening on the right side of the course. You gotta push that dog left. Keep him to the left to make it happen. Take them, boys. Start laid out in the blinds here. We got the gunners to the left. A lot of distractions. First mark down. Ruby did not see that mark. She's a field trial dog. She's not used to guns at the line. She's probably thinking, what in the world are we doing right now? To get to the semifinal round, these dog and handler teams have competed in 90 degree Ruby. heat. It has moderated a bit on today, but the conditions are still tough. Very, very humid down here on the Texas Gulf Coast. Field. Now, Fred has a really unique whistle. If you'll notice there, it looks about like a trumpet, and that's for, for carrying great, great Set. distances. When he blows it, you will know it. Well, great distances are on the menu today. Again, that blind bird, 320 Ruby. yards away, and the marked birds are no picnic either. Pretty decent line. She's fading a little bit right. Look for a quick whistle. She has no idea where any of the other birds are other than the one that was right in her face. Again, we're looking for the fewest number of faults today. The five teams with the fewest faults will right. advance to the final round. Let's see how Fred does marking the birds himself. Often that's a little bit of a learning curve for folks that are just involved with Super Retrievers. Ready. Nice work so far. Fred, the retired engineer from Overland Park, Kansas, 71 years old. Hanging with the youngsters, doing a good job. Big left back there. Again, Ruby, in essence, is running about five blinds here. A little bit deep of the bird. Bingo. Fred's done an outstanding job marking these birds so far. 24 faults is definitely ahead of the game at this point. 
Very impressed. Back. Feel, Big left hand bird. Feel, Whoa. Feel, feel. You notice what he said? He said Check. back, getting trying to get her to to back up a little bit, and that's also the cue for her to go on a blind. So, little handler error there, no big deal. You can't blame Ruby for that one. Boy, it's so hot out here. It's so hot. Humid. Getting kind of close to that blind. He's got to be careful. The wind's pushing him that way. Just a little bit deeper the mark. Got to get her over to the right now. If she picks up the blind, it's over. Immediate disqualification if you pick up the blind first. She can't hear him. Wind's picked up even with the big flute. He cannot get her. Oh, he got to get her stopped. A great score so far, but that blind is poison. If she picks it up, they're disqualified. It's over. It's over. I think that my perception on where that that left hand fall was at was not good. I didn't know whether the dog was too deep or not deep enough. I just don't have the perception. Probably being 71 years old, it does work against me. I'm competing with these youngsters that uh, have better eyesight than I do. Runs a lot of field trial. Seems like in this business, you either come from the field trial game or from the hunt test game. You've managed to put it all together. This is the hardest test I have ever run field trial or hunt test. We are right in the middle of our semi-final round of competition in Max Super Retriever Series here in El Campo, Texas, as we make our way around the square in the Pearl of the Prairie. The coastal Prairie here on the Texas Gulf Coast next to the line, Cade Gentry. The dog is Jesse. Jessie is a grand champion. She's, she's qualified all ages from a field trial standpoint. Probably the most versatile dog left in the field. Outstanding marking dog. She does have a creeping problem, and if you'll notice, Kate has her set up way deep, thinking that she's probably going to creep up Thank where she boy. needs to be. He's putting himself Sit. between her and the line, in other words. <laughs> That's right. Got to see that Sit. long bird. Ugh, maybe flash Heel. marking. Heel. Maybe barely, barely saw Sit. it there. No idea on that Heel. one. Heel, heel. Back way right. Come on, Jess. Sit. Sit. You know she's going to see this one. There's Jesse. Sit. Good little creep in the wind. Got hold of that one. Did you see that? Sit. Blew it way back behind the blinds. Judges will give her a little room there. Come on, baby, dig it out. Atta girl. Looking for the fewest number of faults. Every time you hear a whistle, that's at least two faults. We have. Heel. Stronger Heel. infractions that will net you five points. If he can get her downwind on these marks, he'll be okay because the wind has really picked up. But from a handling standpoint, it's going to make the whistles really, really difficult to hear. The wind is blowing across the course from left to right. That is a west wind today. We do have some weather moving in. We're going to try to complete everything before the bottom falls out. He's right there in the area of the fall, just a little bit deep. There it is, you can see it. That a girl. Best score so far, Bill Autry and Rue, 71 faults. If you noticed, he sent her on back. He's telling everybody and her, you don't know where it is, I'm just gonna send you in the area and hope. Sit. Pretty nice work, got a score 30 going into the two big birds. Good, good bird, good, good, right there. Bye! Long left-hand bird, just on the other side of that little pond. A little right back there. He's going to hold it real tight. He, all he knows, he knows all he has to do is survive here. Just make it to the next series. Kate Gentry, the real estate appraiser from Opelika, Alabama. Uh, right there. That girl. Got the blind to go. The blind, 320 yards, rough and tough. Hey! Excellent score so far, 46 points. Well, I tell you, 320 yards with this kind of wind, it's going to be Bang! almost impossible to hear that whistle. Bang! Boy, you can just hear the wind pick up. I don't know if Cade's if nervous about her hearing the whistle, but I would be. Look how far she is offline oh, now. She's deep. That is a long way. 
She's not hearing him at this point, is she? I don't think she is at all. She's kind of coming in based on the scent and where she, she thinks she should be. She heard him that time. Right over, still shallow. Well, you hate to give a back right here, but especially with a hard running dog like Jesse, because she may just turn and be gone forever. Didn't hear that one. Oh. Man. To tell the truth, I'm glad I didn't lose her. I mean, there's three times I thought she was just gone. You know, you, you get a lung full and let it go when you run out, and you get another lung full and, and, and let it go. Um, the first whistle refusal I got out there, if she would have sat and I could have got the cat, we would have cleaned it up. Here's you. Out of girl. Out of way to stay with me. Here, heal. Here. Got a little Stop ugly her. towards the end, but Kay Gentry and Jesse are in there. They got the job done, and they're in third place. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what these dogs are up against with the heat. Max Super Retriever Series coming to you from coastal Texas, where the heat today is a problem. Every year, we hear about dogs dying in early season. It doesn't necessarily have to be 100 degrees for a dog to overheat. No, in fact, just the opposite. It can, if the, if the temperature plus the humidity equals 150 or more, then you've got a danger day. And what that means is make sure your dog's in condition, be alert, watch for the dog to show signs of overheating, excess panning, staggering, slobbering too much. Stop and get something done. The key is to get the dog cooled off with ventilation. I like to get them in the truck, turn the air conditioner on full blast, blow them right in that mouth. They can suck that cold air down in their, in their body core. Ah. It's okay to cool the dog off in water. Not ice water, but just water. Now, one of the things you don't want to do is take your dog and take it out in a pond. That sounds good on the surface, but if you're not willing to go in there with it, don't do it because the dog gets out there and starts swimming around. It's already overheated. It can drown. You can lose it in the pond. Now, every dog that overheats needs to be checked by a veterinarian, even if the dog appears to be normal, because I've seen it many times in practice. A day, two days later, we get some body systems that start going awry, kidney failure, GI problems, and those dogs can die even a few days later. Managing the heat, managing your dog in the heat, that's part of what's required of these teams today. Here's a familiar team. They won the great outdoor games on their first trip. Gold medal went to Chris Aiken and Boomer. Explosive desire, great dog, grain hunter retriever champion, master hunter. Used to the hunting scenario. Hunts just about every day of duck season. Well suited for this competition. The quintessential Labrador. And in his prime. See it? See it? <laughs> See it? See it? Good. Boom. How well did he mark? A straight line on that one. I think he probably saw more birds than anybody to date. He looks like he did a pretty nice job. Let's see how things uh, work out here. Boom. Again, we're looking for the fewest number of faults. Best score so far, Bill Autry and Rue with 71. Nice work. He's got his two Boom. easy ones out. Let's see what happens on these long birds. Having to handle the area. Wind still rolling pretty good. Bye. Great shot of our parabolic mic there. He's a little bit wide. Need to get him back over. Wind has been increasing all afternoon. The more the wind gets up, the harder it is for the dogs to hear the handler's whistle. Bye. He's not picking Chris up yet on his cast. He really doesn't know where he is. I think he's kind of focused on, in on something behind him. Right there. Only five teams will advance from the semi-final round into the finals. <laughs> a lot shorter than the other one. You hear Chris commenting on, on how the birds are in different areas. Right. Oftentimes as a handler, you fall into a trap watching where the birds fell on the dogs before you instead of concentrating on your birds. And, and, and that's a huge mistake that he's making. I've seen Jerry... Jerry Day make that mistake a number of times. You've got to concentrate on what's going on in your scenario. Yeah, and the handlers have to mark the birds, especially if the dogs don't. When you have winds like this, you can't control exactly where the birds are going to fall. I mean, these guys are throwing them out of wingers. They're already going 40 or 50 yards in the area. When the wind kind of changes a little bit, it can throw those bird boys off a little. 124 going into this last little part of the blind. He's a big back here to carry just a little bit more distance. Pick this thing up. Bye. Oh, 
What a disaster out of this. Birds are all 25, 30 yards from each other from where they were on the first dog. The only two marks he saw was the, the middle mark here on this side and and then of course the short bird coming at me got really, really close to us. I mean he had he even backed up because he knew it was a setup type deal. I had two marks that were totally I mean, 20 to 25 yards different than what I had saw when we were up here for the test dog. Uh, conditions always make a huge difference. And I, you know, it's, it looks like it's fixing to clear back off and some of these other dogs, it might get a little bit easier. So uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Only five teams are going to the finals. With 128, Chris Aiken and Boomer are the fifth place team, the bubble team. When we come back, some big air action, Sabine, the German short hair and world record holder, Little Morgan. This is our Big Air competition presented by Ducks Unlimited. We're in our semi-final round here so far. The leader, Mike McWilliams and Coco, their first appearance on the Super Retriever Series, have busted a jump of 20 feet and two inches. Very, very impressive. Take a look at this one. Gave up a little bit of the deck, but not much. An excellent throw, and this is the team in the lead. But how long will that last? Because the jumps get longer and longer. Let's take a look at Mike Bracken and Sabine. Sabine's got big time ups, just like the wire hairs, as well as the short hairs. They can really get up with a little speed. Oh! Needs got to have a better toss. She did a good job at the dock. She did her job. The handlers just have got to get a better toss here. By and large, we've had good tosses so far, but that one was definitely below par. Yep. I mean, they lost probably two and a half, three feet on the toss. Got to have a great toss. There he is, the world record holder, Little Morgan, Mike Jackson. Justin, tell us why this is the farthest jumping dog in the world. Man, his size is perfect, tremendous amount of speed, a ton of drive and height. He gets un unbelievable height off the dock. 26 feet, two inches is the world record. Oh, golly. <laughs> we got the wind at our back today, an excellent jump, but a toss that was six feet short. We had a world record with a good toss there, a world record with a good toss, and it just didn't happen. Mike Jackson has got to get with Mike McWilliams or somebody. He's got to do a better job on his tosses. 23-8, and that's giving away two feet. They're at the takeoff, but Mike Jackson and Little Morgan, with all that, effortlessly take over the lead, 23 feet and 8 inches. That's the mark to shoot for here in El Campo. All right, our semifinal round continues here in the Retriever Trials to the line. Clint Johnson and Savannah. Savannah is one of the finest pure marking dogs I have ever seen. We've had a multitude of tests over the years that she has been the only dog to come up with the money bird. Uh, just, if she sees it, it's coming home. You can bet on it. See how well she marks on a course that has been difficult for the dogs to mark so far. Man, look at this craziness. I mean, 320 yard blind is, is, is the least of your worries. You got one in your face at five, marks all over the field from 190, 175. Very, very difficult scenario. Clint and Savannah from El Paso, but that's El Paso, Arkansas. Tiny community in the central part of the state. Let's take them. Right there, come on, Set. see that one. Got that one pinned. Set. To the right. I think she saw it. You just can't really tell. Way Set. back right. Got that one. What a set of eyes. I mean, she has unbelievable eyes. Possibly four set. for four, marking those birds. Savannah. Very nice work. If they can hold it together through this <laughs> thing, they're going to be in the cat bird seat. 71 points. Rue, the dog in the lead. One down, three to go. Let's see where she's going here. Looks like she's going for the shorter middle bird. Savannah. Go, girly, go. Only dog to pick up that mark clean. She's got eyes, man, I'm telling you. She's got the gift. Dog does a lot of hunting as well. Ducks, dove, quail, geese, even blood trails, wounded deer. <laughs> He had to fill in all the blanks, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> Savannah. Long right hand bird. Ooh, I just I think that, that short bird kind of erased some of these things. I'm just almost certain that she saw that right hand bird. Got to drive her back now. Got about 100, 150 yards to go. 12 teams again shooting for five spots in the finals here today in El Campo. Clint's a professional trainer. There we go. Here, here, here. Long left-hand bird left. 
Savannah. That eraser bird took its toll on her. She doesn't remember these long birds. Come on, baby. I hope you know where this bird is better than I do. <laughs> it's a hard working team. They do 30 to 35 events every year. Mm, that's a lot of weeks. Get her, get her over right on it. She's real close right in the area of the fall. Right there. Come on, dig it out. Wind's still up. Still rolling pretty good out there. Yet this team, not too much trouble with the communication so far. Mm, hanging in there. Bingo. We're doing good now. Got the blind left. Hope she can hear me in this wind. All right. Nice line. Got to tuck her back into the ride a little bit. With this heat, with this humidity, every retrieve gets a little tougher, doesn't it? Yep, it just compounds itself. Big drive. She's still got a long, long way to go. 71 oh. is the number they're trying to get under if they want to take over the lead. Well, he's really being careful here. That wind's got him really concerned. Oh, one more. Big left back here. Kind of a left angle. Put her on the bird. Conditions were, were terrible, but she was really focused in on me out there. She was watching for my cast and taking them very well. I had a problem on the blind uh, with the lighting conditions. I just couldn't really tell exactly where I had her in, in proportion to the depth of the blind. So I, uh, I gained a lot of points right there. The depth of it's really what got me, really what got me. I couldn't tell if she was deep of it, if she was shallow of it. So what I had to do was work her back and forth by that blind stake and watch for that stake to disappear behind her body, you know, to see if I was short of it, or watch for it to appear in front of her body to see if I was deep of it. Tough situation, but they got it done. Whew. <laughs> that was kind of tough on that blind. Oh, they had the lead in hand at one point. Let it slip away slightly as it is. They are tied for second place. Clint Johnson and Savannah were two-thirds of the way done with our semi-final round in the Super Retriever Series. But in that final flight, some tough customers. Stacy West and Rankin. That dog there, that is Brown, run by Brian Grantham. Also, we're going to see if Little Morgan's 2310 will hold up as we head for the finals in the big air as well. A lot of stuff coming up next time we see you here in El Campo, Texas on the Super Retriever Series.